Creating and maintaining a crystal clear pond is very easy. In fact, there's only really one thing you need to understand to be successful. You don't need to spend lots of money or hire pond professionals. You can if you want to, but it's not necessary. If you don't already know me, my name is Kev, and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. So the one thing you need to understand is how a biological filter works. Once you understand what a biological filter is, how it works and how to size one for your particular situation, you can achieve crystal clear water and a low maintenance pond pretty much every time. So first, what is a biological filter? A biological filter is a filter whose main job is to grow beneficial bacteria. It's called a biological filter because the filter is alive. It's alive with the beneficial bacteria. There's lots of different types of bacteria and it can be a real rabbit warren if you want to go down all the different paths. But for this video, I'm going to keep it super simple. The main type of bacteria we are hoping to grow in our filter is bacteria that process nitrogen. When fish, turtles, ducks, or whatever you are keeping inside your pond produce waste, it creates ammonia. Ammonia is a form of nitrogen, and nitrogen is a plant food. Even the breathing of the living animals inside the pond produce ammonia. Decaying plant material will also create ammonia. So even a pond without livestock will produce ammonia. If nothing processes the ammonia, plants will grow crazy and so will algae. Algae is incredibly opportunistic and will take hold much quicker than standard plants. But bacteria can react and process ammonia even quicker than algae. And these are the bacteria we desperately want in our ponds. The more bacteria we have, the more ammonia they can process. The great news is these bacteria are living all around us. They're free and all we need to do is provide the perfect habitat for them to thrive. In a pond setting, all these bacteria need is wet surfaces to grow on and some oxygen to help them process the ammonia. So you're probably thinking, while the pond is wet, the walls are a surface area, there's rocks, there's pebbles, and there's plants. The pond is exposed to oxygen, so won't the bacteria just grow inside the pond? And you're right, it will. But the question is, will it be enough? See, a pond that has lots of messy turtles will produce a lot more ammonia than a pond with some tadpoles. Therefore, the pond with the turtles needs a lot more bacteria and that means it needs a lot more wet surface area and a lot more oxygen. If there isn't enough bacteria, the algae will grow and so will fast growing aquatic plants like duckweed. A clear sign that a pond doesn't have enough bacteria is green water. The green is a single celled algae feeding on the nitrogen. It's just the classic case of supply and demand. The algae demands nitrogen and because there is a supply, it grows. If the bacteria eats the supply, the algae cannot grow. So this is why we add a biological filter to a pond or aquarium. Its entire purpose is to grow these nitrogen processed bacteria. My personal favorite type of biological filter is a bog filter, but there are lots of different ways that a biological filter can be constructed. For this video, let's just explore how a bog filter works to create clean, clear water. A bog filter is a mini wetland. It's using the same technology or biology that nature has used for millennia. Basically, we're going to pump water from the pond into the bog filter. Ideally, the bog filter is slightly higher than the pond so that the water can be pumped up into the bog and then gravity will carry it back into the pond. The bog filter is filled with rock, pebble and plants. The water from the pond is pumped into the bottom of the bog filter. The water is then forced to rise up through the rock, pebble and plant roots. Nitrogen processing bacteria are growing on all the surfaces of the bog 
every rock, every pebble, and every plant root. Because the water is constantly moving from pond to bog, it's mixing with oxygen. As the water moves through the bog, the bacteria consume oxygen. Once the water moves right through the bog, it's exposed to oxygen again. It can then return to the pond via gravity. You can use a stream, a waterfall, or even just a pipe dumping the water from the bog filter back into the pond. The mixing of water and air will further add oxygen to the water. The beauty of pumping water through a dedicated filter like a bog is that all the water inside the pond is constantly moving through the filter and is guaranteed to come into contact with nitrogen processing bacteria. Without a pump and dedicated filter, you're reliant on the natural movement of water, be it wind, temperature fluctuation, or animals moving it around, but it's much less consistent. A pump moves the same amount of water through the filter every hour, and that makes it much more predictable. There's certain formulas that I use when I'm deciding how big my bog filter will be, what flow rate I use. That's available on my website, ozponds.com, if you're interested. There'll be a link in the description. And so far I've never created a pond that doesn't have clean, clear water when I use a bog filter. And that's why it's my go-to for biological filtration. I've tested and made other types of biological filters, but I find it much harder to size them in relation to the pond's use. Of course, the downside of a bog filter is that it's a large filter in relation to the pond. But I guess that's also what makes it so powerful. It can simply grow more bacteria than most of its counterparts. It also has other benefits I find. For example, I never need to do a water changes in my ponds running bog filters, and it needs much less maintenance. I do still encourage you to look at different types of filters. It's quite fascinating all the different ways that water can be filtered. But remember, if your goal is clean, clear water, all you need to do is create enough habitat for nitrogen processing bacteria in relation to the amount of nitrogen being produced. Large fish, turtles and ducks produce more nitrogen, therefore they need lots of biological filtration. If you want to feed lots, you need lots of biological filtration. And of course, the less nitrogen being produced, the less biological filtration you will need. I hope this video was helpful. I have many videos showing how my ponds and filters were DIY'd. You really don't need to spend a fortune to create a nice, healthy pond. Thanks for watching. See ya.